Hello, this is Rob with MIDIDrumFiles.com and uh, I'm here to do another video tutorial for you. Uh, this time we're talking about latency. Uh, in the last video I kind of alluded to it and then didn't really go into it so uh, I got a whole bunch of people writing me saying, hey, I'm having latency issues, can you talk about that? So here I am going to do this, t this tutorial. So um, let me, I guess we'll look, get started here. Um, if you don't have any MIDI drum files to work with, I'm going to be working with some in this tutorial, so if you want to follow along, you can go to mididrumfiles.com, the website. This is my website. So if you come here, you can click on Download Now, and there's a whole list of uh, MIDI files that you can just download right there and uh, open them up and work with them. Um, and if you like them, buy the full set and help me out, support the cause, and I'll continue to bring uh, great video tutorials to you. So um, today we're working with Sonar 7 by Cakewalk, the same as last time, and uh, eventually we're going to move on to um, Cubase and Reason and some other things, but uh, we'll stick with Sonar for the moment. Um, right, I want to, let's see, let's start with a MIDI drum file. Uh, you can see I've got my list of files here. I'm just going to grab something out of the rock folder and um, let me open that up and bring that in and once I drag that into the window you can see it creates a new document and uh, creates a MIDI track here so uh, but if I hit play just like last time it looks like it's playing but nothing's happening so what I want to do is create a virtual track insert track template virtual um, TTS1, I'm going to go to Rhythm Sets, and I'll just do a standard kit. Okay, so now when I do this, it gives me a, an instrument track here and another MIDI track. And So if I hit play, you can see my first MIDI track is set to run through the TTS1, so you'll be able to hear drums. Okay, so just a bit pretty basic. Uh, what I want to do is highlight track number three here, and you can see my input is set to USB Oxygen 8. That's what I'm using to, that's the keyboard I'm using to input MIDI notes into uh, my system here. So the Oxygen 8 is a little, what is it, two octave keyboard that plugs in by USB and um, it works great. A little bit older now, but it still, it still works great. So what I want to show you is, uh, as you can see, the output is set to the TTS uh, 1 excuse me, TTS 11, is that a 1.1 or 11? TTS 1, I guess. So uh, so when I click on that, now I'm going to hit a key on the keyboard and I want to, you to see how long it takes between the time I hit the key and the time the sound actually comes out of the speaker. So here we go. Okay, let me try the snare drum. So you can see it, it's, it's what, a second? Maybe a little bit less than a second. But that's annoying when you're trying to program a drum beat. Uh, it, it, it just, it's impossible to do that. It, it would be impossible on the piano. It'd be impossible doing an organ track. Any, any track. That latency would be very difficult to work with. So what I want to show you is how to actually solve that problem and um, so let's let's do that right now first of all what I want you to do is go up to options if you're in Sonar 7 every program has a way to deal with latency I, I guess I shouldn't say that almost all programs have a deal uh, have a way to deal with latency um, so let's go up to options and you might think to go to MIDI devices or instruments or something like that but what we're dealing with is actually an audio problem um, so let's go to audio and um, it's an audio problem because what's happening is it's it's taking time for your sound card to actually receive the MIDI data, transform transform it into an actual audio sound, and e output it to your speakers. So it's uh, it's it's actually an audio problem, an audio conversion problem. So as you can see in the audio options here, at the very bottom there's what's called a buffer size, 
and um, this buffer size I have it set all the way to the right so I could give you that example so when I hit a key it takes a second for the sound to come out however what I want to do to speed up my uh, to actually reduce my latency time is to slide this to the left now what I want to do is slide it all the way to the left however uh, on some computers uh, depending on your CPU speed your RAM speed your sound card uh, the, all these things play play into it and they're all factors so you may need to back this off uh, your it, sometimes if you put it up too high too fast it will uh, start to clip and start to sound bad and d it distorts it causes all kinds of uh, dropouts and things like that so what you want to do is back this off a little bit now in my case my computer I've, I have a pretty fast computer with a lot of RAM so I can handle this all the way up to fast and I, I don't have any problems in in the system in doing that so put it up as high as you can without getting distortion if you get distortion back this off a little bit to the to the right and uh, that should solve your latency problems so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna put it all the way to the left hit OK now when I try to play my drums um, click on track 3 and there's literally no latency I shouldn't say that actually there is a little bit of latency but it's almost undetectable by the human ear it's so minuscule so um, uh, there's no way to actually get no latency because uh, the computer still has to process your stuff you, you know the signal from your hand to the speaker there's still it takes time to get there but it, it'll be uh, so small that you can't detect it uh, so that's what we're going for now uh, in some cases if you're working with some sound cards I know I had a sound blaster sound card a while back that had just incredibly long latency times and um, I it was just that this situation this uh, option didn't work to go into audio and and move that buffer size so what I had to do was I had to go and download a program here's the website you can download from it's called ASO for all, A S I O for all, A L L dot com, and um, if you click down, uh, scroll down a little bit, you can see here's the download link. You basically download that and install it. And let me see if I can um, bring that up. Let's see. Here we go. Here's what it looks like when you install it, and it's got this buffer size here at the bottom and this will um, set your latency actually this is th I don't know exactly how they do it but somehow they bypass a lot of the processing in your sound card and um, maybe it processes it in software before it sends it to your sound card I I don't know the details but uh, this in the past has reduced my latency to to almost nothing and so this works when you're dealing with audio and MIDI and it's just it's very very handy so ASIO for all and give it a shot so there are two little tips for you if you want to give those a shot and see if that helps with your latency problems um, if not uh, comment in the comment section of this video and we'll see what we can do uh, to maybe help you out with the with the problem and um, anyway, I hope that helps. Please go to mididrumfiles.com and uh, look around, uh, sign up for the mailing list, and um, buy the set if you if you like them. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.